the purchasing we have discussed all the purchasing scenario then procure to pay scenario that is then we are seeing how the position hierarchy works out then similar to that supervisor hierarchy employee supervisor hierarchy what is the ME application management engine and how it is going to going to be helpful for requisitions approvals only okay we have different document types and we have different purchase order types we have purchase order types four purchase order types they are standard purchase order planned purchase order blanket purchase order contract purchase agreement we have this many purchase order types each purchase order type is different how it is getting differentiated so let us see how it is getting differentiated let us go to responsibility purchasing is too slow okay if you go to purchase orders if you open purchase orders this instance is very slow let me open another instance as well Okay, now I have purchasing here. If you open the purchase order, I have some of the purchase orders, right? Let me open the file. I should this file. And we have hierarchy also. Now This is the purchase order document you are going to create after that you are going to print you know how to run the report right to run a report you have to go to view requests submit new request single request you have to select all the reports here all the reports will be existing here okay if you want a purchase order purchase order print can be given like this also a report name you have to select what is PO what is the PO document or report name how it is given like the report name has been given like if you see let us say purchase the report will be the if you know the report name you can select the report name then you can run the report for certain purchase data.
can select the printed purchase order reports landscape select and I want new POS only so in case you have changed after approval those, those are called as changed if you want to print changed POS then definitely you can select changed new means the fresh PO which has been created newly without any changes after getting the approval you can take the print for new if you want all you can print all I want only new okay now what is the purchase order number you can select from the list of values I have different purchase order numbers here okay let me take this purchase order then click OK submit no fine this request runs once it is completed you can open the output and you can see in the PDF document then you can print the document from the printer see not only this procedure like you can go from here also if you want to find a PO you can find PO like this the PO you can see at the bottom let us see the PO which are approved 16920 okay this is open there is no revision that means it is not changed even at once so after approval there are no changes so this is the document number copy this then go to actions or yeah. view document okay there is enquire and go to view document when you select view document that will open another HTML form see it has been opened here PDF save it and open see this is the one like okay so like this we have all the purchase order information this is the PDF this is the report you can print simply so that is the output and that is how you you have to run then you have different document types I said it is standard purchase order but similarly if you open a purchase order freshly then here you can see four document types four purchase order types what are those blanket purchase agreement contract purchase agreement planned purchase order standard purchase order see while practicing the application at any point of time if you want to see the help you have window help here if you click window help it will open the relevant topic whatever the form you have opened relevant topic will be open I click on window help because I want to give an explanation this is homework for you at the same time I'm, I'm giving the information what is purchase order what are the purchase order types I'm going to explain and after that I'm going to give a gist how to create blanket plan or contract and for the blanket mostly you'll be using or contract or plan sometimes okay but any document you are preparing finally you have to reach to standard purchase order that is the reason we have concentrated on standard purchase order standard purchase order is common whether you are using blanket contract or plant because planned purchase order is going to have a schedule based on the schedule again whenever you release the schedule you go for schedules and each schedule cre will create a standard purchase order similarly blanket blanket purchase agreement will have releases and each release will create again a standard purchase order anyway planned schedule and contract which is having contract purchase order is having agree, contract contract agreements right each agreement will create one standard purchase order so here you can see 
enter purchase order headers in which you can see the document types purchase order types if you scroll down see here purchase order types we have all these purchase order types okay now standard purchase order blanket purchase agreements global blanket agreements we have so these are different concepts okay i'm going to give the gist of see here global blanket agreement it is very important as a point of interview okay you may need to negotiate based on the enterprise's total global purchase volume to enable centralizing the buying activity across the broad and sometimes diverse set of business using global agreements a special type of blanket purchase agreement buyers can negotiate enterprise wide pricing business by business then execute and manage those agreements in one central shared environment enterprise organization can then access the agreement to create purchase orders that leverage pre-negotiated prices and terms you can encumber funds for a global agreement similarly we have i'm going to explain blanket you create blanket purchase agreements when you know the details of goods or services you plan to buy from specific supplier in period but you do not at know the detail of your delivery schedules you can use blanket purchase agreements to specify negotiated prices for your items before actually purchasing the purchasing them okay blanket purchase agreements can be created for single organization or to be shared by different business units of your organization there it becomes global agreement it's very simple global blanket agreement is nothing but blanket purchase agreement but where is a checkbox which is global when you enable global that becomes global that means what what is the purpose of that blanket purchase agreements can be created for single organization but if you want the same purchase agreement blanket purchase agreement meant for different organizations then that means that has to be shared by different business units of your organization then it becomes global agreement global agreement means it doesn't mean that everybody like if tata motor is the company tata motor might be having different branches across the world for all the world branches if you are using okay just a minute
sorry i got another call uh, see here you have to understand what is blanket what is global what is blanket release what is contract purchase agreements i'm going to explain blanket releases so when you have blanket purchase agreement you should have blanket releases also but this is a purchase order type this is not a purchase order it is going to blanket release you would require to create a standard purchase order then we have contract purchase agreements you can issue a blanket release against a blanket purchase agreement to place actual order that is called standard purchase order as long as the release is within the blanket agreement effectivity dates blanket means it is it is going to have an effectivity means I will have a supplier Tata Motor is a company okay this application is used by Tata Motor Tata Motor would require MRF tires so they are going to have a blanket purchase agreement with the MRF company saying that from January 1st to December 31st we have to send these items at this price and effectivity of that blanket purchase agreement is from January 1st to Jan 1st to December 31st that's it that means that is called effectivity when you have the effectivity date as long as that effectivity is valid then you can keep on releasing the uh, releasing the purchase uh, blanket releases which would create standard purchase order okay that's what then contract purchase agreements you create contract purchase agreements with your suppliers to agree a specific terms and conditions without indicating the goods and services that you are going to buy that you will be purchasing you can later issue standard purchase orders referring referencing your contracts and you can encumber these purchase orders if you use encumbrance account when you use encumbrance concept is somewhat it is financial concept it's not required as of now but mostly encumbrance concept will be coming whenever you go for contract purchase agreement it's very simple contract you are going to have specific terms and conditions without having any goods or services i am going to buy from you how much i will give the business of 1 million okay 1 million but whatever i ask you you have to send that's fine supplier agrees for that then what happens whenever you would require that time only you will come to know what is the, what is the item then you will go for standard purchase order to be created okay to be created and referring to this contract saying that you are going to create a standard purchase order with respect to one supplier saying that boss we have the contract based on those terms and conditions this is the purchase order actual purchase order i am going to create so please send the goods to the agreed terms and conditions the price will be agreed so what was the agreed price based on that we go ahead so this is what till you reach one million one, mil, one million worth of contract so as long as that 1 million has been reached till you reach to 1 million you can buy you can buy whatever the item you want with the agreed terms and conditions that's what contract purchase agreement similarly global contract purchase agreements okay similar to blanket purchase agreements you are going to have contract purchase agreements here contract purchase agree agreements you don't know goods and services okay if you have this contract then the same contract is applicable across the branches of the company of Tata Motor across the globe then it is going to be global you can use global contract agreements a special type of contract purchase agreement to centralize a, supp a supplier relationships okay buyer throughout the enterprise can then leverage this relationship by referencing this global contract agreement in your standard purchase orders this is what global contract purchase agreement then planned purchase order we have here you will be having schedules a planned purchase order is a long-term agreement committing to buy the items or services from single source from single source you must specify tentative delivery schedules it is very important delivery schedules and all details for goods or services that you want to buy including charge account quantities estimated cost what is charge account have you remembered in the purchase order we have lines shipments distributions in the distributions we have destination account that is charge account that's what it is talking about okay planned purchase order will have schedules you know what are the delivery dates 
as per those delivery dates you are going to have the uh, schedules based on those schedules again it's going to create a standard purchase order okay that's what here that schedule should be released blanket will be having a blanket releases blanket releases and planned purchase order will be having scheduled releases you can issue scheduled releases against planned purchase order to place actual orders the, this actual order is nothing but standard purchase order if you use encumbrance accounting again contract and planned you will be having the concept of encum encumbrance okay you can use planned purchase order to deserve funds for long-term agreements you can also change the accounting distributions on each release and the system will reverse the encumbrance for planned purchase order and create new encumbrance for release now this is important see it's very simple here all the document types all the purchase order types we have we have standard purchase order planned purchase order blanket purchase agreement counter purchase agreement what is there what is not there it is going to be that is the only difference it is the common question can you tell me the difference between standard plan blanket and contract now difference is terms and conditions are known with all the purchase order types goods and services you don't know sometimes what is that that is contract you are going to have contract so the terms and conditions you know that but you don't know what is the item you are going to buy what is the service you are going to get from the supplier you don't know you are going to have a contract that's it then for remaining orders we know that so these things you know interviewer will be asking so do you know the goods while having a contract no we don't know we simply talk about terms and conditions that's it do you know the price sometimes sometimes means for blanket maybe you may know or you may not similarly contract you don't know because when you don't know item how, how can you know the price for contract even you don't know the goods or services that you are going to get from the supplier so this is what this table is very important you have to remember and account distributions see you don't know when you know when you have blanket and contract okay but planned you know that standard you know that because planned you know what is the schedule and you know long term agreement long term commitment with respect to supplier then you know what is the charge account all these things can be encumbered yes see only contract except contract can be encumbered so encumbered concept i will tell you later on okay can encumber religious okay it is possible for blanket and planned purchase order now this this box is very important why because when you go for blanket you will have effectivity and contract of course you have the effectivity and worth of contract and based on that you go for different releases if it is blanket okay a part of that will be released so that standard purchase order will be created if you see simply i will show you here it is standard by default if i select blanket when I select blanket, something else is enabled. Have you observed? When I select here some standard, okay, observe that is disabled. Okay, it is total. If total means what are the item you enter here, what is the quantity, what is the price multiplied by that, and that total will be coming here. But when you select blanket, that is different. See, agreed amount. Amount agreed, blanket means. Sometimes you may know the item, but you don't know the item. Still, I agree the amount. I'll give a business of 1 million. That's it. That's what blanket. But it is having an effectivity. Okay. So, see here. When I select this, then there is a global checkbox. Have you got it? So, this is what. This global is going to be. In case if you enable global, this blanket purchase agreement it's very important question that's why that is the reason i'm telling you when you select global okay this purchase order whatever it, whatever you create as a blanket purchase agreement and enable with the global that means 
this purchase order can be used across the companies across the globe okay across the branches okay existing globally okay means you have the branch in america america and you have the branch in india or china wherever you go so for all the organizations you can use this you know they can refer this document and they can get the item so it is worth of 1 million and whenever japan wants like let us say one branch is existing in japan then what happens japan needs some items a worth of 0.25 million that's it so a part of this blanket this blanket agreed amount is 1 million but a part of that that is nothing but release then once you create this blanket purchase agreement and what are the items you are going to enter and after that then price if you know the price and everything then promise date need by date everything will be entered charge account see distribution used to have the charge account in the standard purchase order but there is no distribution here have you observed simply charge account in the first line in the first form itself in the lines or lines tab we have all the information to be entered okay after this when you create a blanket purchase agreement and you are keeping global just a minute okay whenever you go for blanket purchase agreement you are going to have religious means once you approve this document you will have the purchase order number and you have the item details or whatever it may be if you don't know leave it it is optional have you observed this the lines are optional because you don't know sometimes it might be see here it is mentioned as for blanket it is maybe pricing you don't know okay so that's what so maybe so that is the reason everything is optional if you know you enter otherwise leave it but header is important and it is important in the header level this portion is called header this part is called lines line level and header level header level we have global when you enable global flag this is called checkbox or flag when you enable this flag it will be this agreement meant for all the branches across the world and any branch can get the item having a reference of this PO number. So it's it's not like only one operating unit. That means purchasing, I told you, purchasing at a operating unit level. Now you have to understand multi-year concept. I told you purchasing at operating unit level, you're manufacturing at inventory organization level, you are receiving at inventory organization level, but When I say operating unit level, if I pre prepare the document, operating unit is a is a part of legal entity. Legal entity is a part of ledger. Ledger is a part of business group. Right? This is the, this is the structure. <clears throat> you might be having different ledgers. From one ledger, we have this operating unit. We have another ledger. From another ledger, we have another operating unit. But still, that operating unit can access this document when you enable this global. That's what I'm telling you. Let us say, for example, topmost company, you know that business group. Just I repeat the multi structure. You might have forgot. Topmost is business group. Then we have ledgers. Each ledger will have legal entities. And each legal entity will have operating units. Each operating unit have will have inventory organizations. Within inventory organization, we have sub inventories. Within sub inventories, we have locators. Locators, row, rack, bin. We have this structure. If you say one to one, that's fine. But one to one, it's impossible. 
Why? Because every company will be having the company which is maintaining Oracle application definitely it will be having branches. Means the Oracle application product itself is millions of dollars then definitely if it is buying a software for millions of dollars that the company range will be big bigger so definitely it will be having multiple branches across the world so if that is the case how they are maintaining the structure the structure can be like this business group they can have one or two or three but what is the question here when can you have multiple business groups it's very simple as long as you have HR, HR policy same, you will have one business group. In case HR policies are different, then we are going to have different business groups. But each business group should have one ledger at least. The purpose of ledger is based on your currency, based on your calendar, based on your chart of account structure. Chart of account structure means how many segments you are going to have. Six or seven or eight, maximum how many. The company which is using most, most number of segments is GE, General Electricals. GE company which is using 13 segments of Oracle. Because their business is vast and it's so big and across the globe. They have the branches, they have head offices. So, that is the maximum number of segments used by a company that is the only only one company that is GE which is using 13 segments. Now each ledger I told you one business group can have multiple ledgers or single ledger is mandatory right without one ledger you cannot do your business because ledger should be there and within the ledger you should have legal entity and within legal entity you should have operating unit within operating unit you should have inventory organization within inventory organization sub inventory within sub inventory we have locator now one business group should have one ledger or multiple ledger whether i am going to have single ledger or multiple ledgers is going to be is going to be Based on your currency difference means if you have multiple currency, you have to go for multiple ledger. That's it. There's no other go. So if you have currency difference, then you have to go multiple ledgers. If you have calendar difference, what is calendar? It is accounting calendar, not a year, not it's it's a fiscal year, not it's not a fiscal year. It's accounting calendar means how many periods you are going to maintain for your financial maintenance like we have periods there is a accounting calendar and an accounting calendar which will be having which will be having like what are the periods what are the quarters okay how many quarters are there each quarter how many adjustment periods are there all this structure will be defined in the accounting calendar if one come one branch is following one calendar another branch is following another calendar then i should have two ledgers that's it simple as long as all are same you can have one ledger but you have different currencies at least one different currencies of course you are having common calendars no issues but still one one of those calendars or currencies or anything is different you are going to have multiple then you should have multiple ledgers that's it it is tambaru you have to remember so these are the questions will be asked on multi arc structure. Multi arc structure is very important and it's very complicated and keep on learning. You know, you read as many as much as you can from the Google or what are the you search multi arc structure in Oracle. You will get some concept. Read whatever it may be. I already explained multi arc structure in the class. If somebody missed then definitely they have to spend time by going to the classroom and it listen those classes again anyway i'm going to repeat okay then we have ledgers each ledger should have legal entity what is legal entity the name itself is indicating each ledger should have at least one legal entity but whether are you going to have are you going to have one legal entity or multiple legal entity that depends upon the situation the situation is like this Legal entity 
is the organization which carries out all the legal activities with respect to government or with respect to our organization and between the organizations what are the legal or public relations taxation rules regulations all these things will be coming under legal entity the name itself is indicating legal everything is should be legal okay so it will take care of all the legal activities documentation taxation and all those things with respect to government simple example if you want to establish a leather factory in residential area nobody agrees even government will not give license why there are certain conditions chemicals are there it is going to be polluted so it should be very far away from community public so that is how those are the conditions you have to fulfill so such kind of issues taxation rules and regulations will be taken care by legal and legal entities but it's a part of ledger ledger is a part of business group i told you ledger is the segment structure chart of chart of account what is chart of account chart of account is nothing but combination of different segments having one unique number your phone number itself is a segment uh, combination of segments don't you know your phone number and if somebody asks you will tell 10 digits number why can't you tell one one or two or three three, three digits there is no number existing with three digits right why are you telling 10 digits if i am asking because i am at america so you are telling you are adding to your 10 digit number as 0091 right why are you adding 0091 that means 0091 meant for country then 40 meant for hyderabad then you are telling some eight digit number in which first four digits or first three digits is the type of is a postpaid or prepaid okay such kind of then remaining thing is the account number or employee sorry customer number i can identify all together which is forming one unique number that is nothing but account number based on that account number only you are paying you are paying towards account number not your name that account number is nothing but ledger chart of chart of account ledger is dependent on currencies chart of account structures and calendar we have convention these are called as four c's four c's earlier it was three c's now convention is the new one as has been added we have ledger on top of the business group below to the ledger we have legal entity within the legal entity we have operating unit when you have operating unit you can have multiple operating units when i create this purchase order in one operating unit can i give this can i give the accessibility for this purchase order for another operating unit yes if you enable global if you don't enable if you don't do not enable this global that's it this is particularly for your operating unit only another operating unit can also refer this purchase order while buying the item from the supplier provided you enable this global then this purchase order becomes global purchase agreement not blanket purchase agreement of course it is a part of blanket it's a it's a blanket purchase agreement but accessible by all the companies across the globe all the companies in the sense all the operating units within the operating unit you have in inventory organizations because you should maintain different branches as a manufacturing plant or distribution center to reach the customer exactly on time you can have one company but you should have branches in hyderabad vijayawada or vizag in new york texas california like that why should we have to reach their respect to customers right you cannot ask california customer to get the item from new york so i have to maintain the branch in california so that through that branch i can reach to the california customer quickly otherwise you lose the business you will go to another vendor simply buys the product from there so we have inventory organizations which are called as distribution centers branches or plants or manufacturing units then within the inventory organization we have sub inventories because inventory organization a branch can be very big if you see the warehouse of a tata motor company you have acres right acres you have no acres we have the the land is 
we have finished good items returned items spare parts we have partitions of the warehouse and within that we have tires sub assemblies like engines and all those things right so these are called partitions of warehouse which are called sub inventories one sub inventory meant for spare parts one sub inventory meant for consumables one sub inventory meant for raw materials one sub inventory meant for finished goods one sub inventory meant for returned items one sub inventory meant for uh, repair items or meant uh, or asset items it's up it's up to you how many sub inventories you want to have but within sub inventory sub inventory also so big these sub inventory meant for bearings and belts and gauge boxes i want certain bearing bearings are very small when i say sub inventory it's so big it's a room within the room you have different racks now tell me can you search for a bearing if you know the exact location of the bearing then you will go to that location and pick the item simply it is simply a book stall in koti what is book stall you go to book stall and ask for a book you are engineer okay you will ask for engineer book your friend is doctor doctor asks, asks for some doctor book some medicine book similarly somebody wants novel okay let him buy novel then somebody says notebooks or something else textbooks or class elementary school or engineering or pg mba we have different different books right if you go to koti the book stalls the books are arranged in a sequence in different racks when somebody asks medicine you will go to one direction and it picks the item when you ask the engineering book you will go to another direction when you ask something novel then definitely you will you will go to some other direction you will pick from certain racks only that means he is maintaining all the novels at one rack medicine books at one rack engineering books at one rack so like that which gives the facility to pick the item exactly quickly okay so if i want a bearing to be picked from certain sub inventory and you are giving the information like once you enter into the sub inventory you have many racks go to the rack number 5 the rack number is 5 having different rows rack will be having different rows right you go to third row and within the row we have bins bins means a small partitions again bins you go for third bin that means fifth rack fourth row third bin if you know this coordinator simply go to that rack number count the row numbers then go to fourth row and you have three partitions that is called bins so select from item from third bin that's it exactly it's nothing but a coordinator x y z a kind of from geometry if you know the x y z i can point in i can point i can put a point or a, i can put an object in space if you following 2d on a paper if you have x axis and y axis can't you point out one point where it is exactly located travel towards x for 10 meters then travel towards y direction for 5 meters then if you know 10 comma 10 comma 5 is the core 10 and 5 are the coordinators coordinates then you can specify the point exactly on the paper similar to that if you want to specify the exact location of the item you should have locator row rack bin information which is a part of sub inventory sub inventory is a part of operating unit operating unit is a part of legal entity legal entity is a part of ledger ledger is a part of business group this is multi arc structure now once i create blanket purchase agreement okay you have releases this release will ask you what is the po number that po number is nothing but just now you created what are the blanket it is your homework i am not going to create blanket planned or whatever it may be i am not going to create you have to create okay create and enter the number then enter the lines what item you want to similar to standard purchase order see it looks like standard purchase order okay you have to enter the items you have the distributions okay 
that's it no shipments shipment is nothing but that information is this only shipments only shipment in the lines we have in the blanket purchase order but whenever you go for religious you are simply asking for shipments only so shipments that's it that's what you have to understand when it is global one branch is asking from california to india Indian organization, Indian operating unit has raised the purchase order that is blanket and keeping it global enabled. Then California organization can use that blanket purchase order saying that they can go for another release saying that ship to your shipment will be organization will be California organization ship to will be California. So you are having a parent document as one but you are having different releases against different ship to locations and having different distribution accounts what global purchase agreement sorry global global blanket purchase agreement okay that's it it is standard purchase order again this is how when you go for planned okay you are going to have schedules that's it nothing much when you go for planned okay everything is same but only thing is you will go for you have the shipments here then you will have schedules okay <clears throat> just a minute Plan purchases order will be having dates, okay? And you you know the schedules, okay? And item you will be having the dates and everything. You will have the shipments and all the information. Then you go for like we have planned purchase order. We will have the schedules. Schedules we have to so go from workbench. I think I will show you. It's simply planned purchase order will have schedules. Blanket purchase order will have will have releases. Okay, when you go for release, that will create again. So it is nothing but again, it is release only. It is scheduled release only. Release meant for both planned and blanket. So when you go for releases, okay, when you go for releases, when you rename it as a schedule, then it will be appear as schedule. But only thing is, if it is, this release can be used for blanket and planned. Because for planned, we call it as scheduled release. For blanket, we call it as blanket release. This is what release. Okay, when you go for release, it is nothing but standard purchase order again. Okay, it's a simple process. Creating main document and you are going to create a release. That's it. Everything is same. Okay, then you'll have to you have to enter item details, shipment details, ship to location, and all those things, and then distribution account. Then approve it approval it is same as same as purchase order only we have we have selected right in the approval groups like what kind of document types you can approve sorry in the purchase setup we have approval groups when you go for approvals we have approval assignments when you assign you are assigning here document types right I have given all planned blanket standard requisition all internal requisition and all those things okay so this and after that we have one more requisition this is very important and for interview purpose also because we have seen standard out of what are the types of purchase requisitions we have two types one is internal and another one is purchase requisition we have seen purchase requisition but we have not seen internal requisition for this we would require order management knowledge also why because i will tell you the example here internal requisition the name itself is indicating internal let us say tata motor is having branch in hyderabad then it is also having branch in ahmedabad in gujarat okay we have the case of Tata Nano. Tata Nano is manufactured at only one place across the country, right? Across the globe. I would say in India, in Gujarat, we have the plant. Nowhere else. Does it mean that we are not getting Tata Nano at Hyderabad? 
we know we have we have seen in villages also how it has been reached then means Hyderabad branch might have got the Tata Nano item from Gujarat then it has distributed two different branches of its branches then from those branches it has reached to customer right that means whenever Hyderabad Tata Motor would require Tata Nano it will buy from it will buy from it will get the item from Gujarat Tata Motor only it will not buy from Vipro it will not buy from Tech Mahindra or it will not buy from Mahindra it will not buy from Maruti it will buy from Tata Motor Gujarat branch that's it so what is that again this is one day entire entire Tata Motor is one family but we have the structure multi arc structure by utilizing multi arc structure how we are going to get the item from Gujarat to Hyderabad that is very important So internal requisition is nothing but whenever Hyderabad would require Tata Nano, it will create internal requisition. It is very simple. You create internal requisition, remaining thing is same. Whereas supplier is what is supply? It is simple. Tata motor only. And your organization. So here your there is no supplier. See here organization, destination type and source, you have source here, right? Are you buying from supplier? No. Then who else? It will be inventory only. See, when it is internal requisition, when you enter the item and after that you have to come here, see the list of values of source, you can see inventory. I will show you for example. Requisition summary. I have internal requisition. I, I want to show you. Okay, yes, what is the IR is there? Okay, this is the IR. Okay, okay, let me see this IR is existing or not. Requisition number is this. Sorry, yeah, it is there. Then, see, this requisition is internal, it's incomplete, of course. Let us see internal requisition. Go to lines. Okay, you have everything, item and everything. And distributions. There is no distribution in this line. Let me quickly requisition. What is that requisition? This is the requisition. Hmm. See, what is the source? The source is inventory or supply. Simple. When you are buying from an external supplier, not from Tata Motor, then it will be supplier. When you are getting from Tata Motor another branch, then it should be inventory. When it is inventory, system understands it is internal and the type of requisition is internal. When you approve the document, it will create a sales order in Gujarat. Why? Why? Because Gujarat is shipping, means Gujarat is selling. When you want to sell, then you should require sales order. So Gujarat organization will have sales order automatically will be created in Gujarat from Hyderabad. Whereas in Hyderabad, internal requisition will be there. Reference having reference of this requisition, a sales order will be created in Gujarat, and salespeople of Gujarat branch will ship the item to Hyderabad branch. Hyderabad branch will receive the item the way you receive the item, purchased item from the supplier. Simple. That's what we are going to see. For that, we would require the knowledge of order management. But you should know what is internal requisition. That is the reason we are discussing this. So you have to read the this particular help understand if you have any questions you can ask and further you have to practice by creating different documents and you can have a release of schedules against panel planned against blanket you will have blanket releases but you should be thorough with standard purchase orders keep in mind you should know what is planned what is blanket what is contract what is global what is release what is schedule if you don't know this, 
will not be able to answer. But for every order, standard purchase order is common. You have to remember this. Further, we have accounting entries for purchasing. I am going to discuss in the next class. I am going. That is very important. So that is the reason. So we already reached to 11 o'clock. We it is now 11 11 p.m. here. So we will discuss in the next class. Okay. So you have any questions on this?